Hello everyone, this is D22 with you today from D22 Responses, and this video is going to be a little different. This video is going to have two tutorials. Now, I don't know if it'll fit everything in it, but we're going to try. This first tutorial will be on some advanced techniques in Windows Movie Maker, and the second tutorial will be some advanced techniques on Sony Vegas. So, once this video is fully uploaded, I'm going to include the annotations so that each annotation can take you to each part of the tutorial. So there's going to be an annotation that will specifically start the Windows Movie Maker tutorial, and there will also be a tutorial that an annotation that will start the Sony Vegas tutorial. So first, we're going to start off with Windows Movie Maker. So not many computers will have Windows Live Movie Maker, so we're just going to type it in so that we can access it. Now for Windows Live Movie Maker it's usually either a download or an update through the Windows website. Now some of you may not have this so if you don't leave it in the comments below about this. So what we're going to do first is we are just going to do add videos and photos. So we're just going to take any video that we have here and then we're just going to open it up. Now some people wanted to know how to put in two videos at once. Now, you can import two videos like this and then you can include it with each thing. So basically you can play two movies at once but I don't know if you can do picture in picture. It doesn't seem to have that option here because it has the auto movie, the animations tab here, like it, it gives you the animations to select, like you can put in a transition so let's just play this for example, it'll give you that transition but for pan and zoom it's a different it's a different thing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try something with pan and zoom so we're gonna play back the movie what's going on everyone this is D22 with you today so we're gonna stop it right there and pan and zoom would usually be an option that we can use, but for some reason, it's not. And then you can usually set the aspect ratio and visual effects, that sort of thing. And you can set the brightness of the video and adjust it like that. And you can also set fade in and fade out. And video volume. You can't do picture in picture in this version of Movie Maker. And for speeding it up, usually you would go around here. It would usually have that, but unfortunately, it doesn't have that option. It has paste, cut, copy, add videos, add music, title, caption, credits, auto movie, rotate, rotate right, rotate left. Auto, audio mix, fit to music, select all, remove, and then YouTube sharing. That's what it has. Like you can put it in an email and everything like that. Animations just has like the transitions. Just has transitions like that. So, and then you can set the duration of the animation. Then you can also put pan and zoom in. Let's say if we were to go at a certain point here. Wait a minute. Why isn't the pan and zoom option working? Won't it let me do that? I'm not sure. This is one thing about Windows Live Movie Maker. I've only used it like when I first started on YouTube. So I wouldn't know if there were any other advanced versions here. So that's all we could do. But you can also set the thumbnail size of the story on the uh, video tools editor. That's all you can do. You can put multiple videos in, you can trim them, and you can cut them out. So you can also just move them to a certain point. In that regard, that's all you can do. It's not as advanced as other editors. But you can also set aspect ratio so that it's in HD, so it's good for just touch-ups, that sort of thing. And the video tools tab allows you to go into a trim tool and then you can set a start point let's say right here you can set a start point to at about 18 seconds then the end point's about 73 seconds so you can set the start point here and end point there and then you can play back your movie this video yet this is a video where I it just stops right there and then you can also trim it one has seen 
this video yet. And it stops right there when you set the start point. So you can either save the trim or cancel the trim. And then you can also fade in the audio. And then you can go fade out fast. So once your entire video ends, it's going to fade out properly. So not a lot of tools can be used in Windows Movie Maker because you can import from device, publish movie on the internet, add a plugin. You can go and click add a plugin and then it'll take you to, let's say, the Windows Live plugins. And then you can click the Windows Movie Maker plugins. And there are just a few to name, like publishing plugins and all plugins. There's not a lot of plugins to add. You can also upload it to Facebook and everything else, that sort of thing. So Windows Movie Maker is not really an advanced editor. It's only a basic editor. So you can't do picture in picture. You can't slow down the video here. You can't do any of that here. So unfortunately, it's only limited to just putting movies in, adding animations like this, putting in visual effects, viewing in and zooming in and zooming out, resetting everything, setting the aspect ratio, and that's it. That's all you can do. And then just fading in the audio, splitting it up. If you go to a certain point here, you can split it up, and that's it. That's all you can do. And then render it and publish it. That's all you can do. Unfortunately, Windows Movie Maker is only limited to those. So now we're going to move on to Sony Vegas 12. We're going to close that up. We're not going to save the changes. We're just going to move on to a more advanced editor. So I'm sorry for all the people that were wondering how to do certain things in Windows Live Movie Maker, but you can't. I think the other version of Windows Movie Maker can, but this is a Windows 7 computer. And unfortunately, I cannot show you how to do that because I don't think Windows Movie Maker, the original version, is compatible with Windows 7. So, for Sony Vegas, you can do all those things. You can put picture in picture, you can speed up or slow down, you can split the video, you can do any of that. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we're going to import some more videos here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and get these two videos again. Now, we're going to show you how to put in more than one video. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our video here and drag it down to our timeline in Sony Vegas. Now I know a lot of you don't have Sony Vegas so you can probably find a way to get it but however you get it is up to you. So let's say we have one video here but oh wait we want to add another video. So what we do is we're going to right click on the timeline and then we're going to go insert video track. So it inserts another track that we can put another video in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go click on this video and then drag it here onto the next track. Oh wait, look at this. It's overlapping. Why is that? We haven't cropped it properly yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our video that's on top and then we're going to go make sure you click on the green area. Right click on the green area on your video and then select video event pan and crop. So now it'll take you to a cropping window. And then what you can do is you can adjust your video size. So you can adjust it like this and like that. You can make it smaller or make it bigger. And you can crop it however you want. You can crop it upside down. You can invert yourself and you can get yourself nicely oriented like this. You can go square to make it look like you filmed it on an iPhone or full screen. And you can set it to default as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just crop it like this and then we're going to just take a look at a certain part. Look, notice that they're stacked on top. And then what I just did here, let's just, let's just go back. I went too fast there. You see the two videos stacked on each other. We just cropped this one and we left the other one behind. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this button called Track Motion. And what we do is we have another window here that allows us to track the motion of this other video. 
it has to be the one that you just cropped so that you can layer it properly. So what we're going to do next is we're going to move it to, let's say, the right or left side. We're going to move it to the right side here. So as you can see here, we've performed what's called a picture-in-picture -picture effect. And we've allowed our other video to be moved to the right or left side. And you can position it however you want. If you have like a live footage, if you have live footage of yourself playing a game, this is what you can do. Like if you play Call of Duty or something like that, you can put in your footage on the side here so that it looks like you're doing active commentary. And it's really cool. So we're just going to just test this out. Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone. Girl. So basically, the videos are playing simultaneously with this picture in picture effect. So, what you can basically do is that the footage that's on the bottom right here can be your face and the camera, and then the footage that is above it will be like your game footage. And you can resize this to however you want. So, it just doesn't have to be this big. You could either make it smaller in size and then you can position it however you want. So that is how you do picture in picture in Sony Vegas. And what we're going to do next, we're just going to erase our little thing there. What we're going to do next is we're going to teach you how to slow it down. We're going to slow down our footage. So what we're going to do is we're going to resize the timeline so that we can see everything properly. Now this would be normal speed footage. So we're just going to delete some of this right now. This will be normal speed footage. This is this is what it looks like in normal speed. Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is D22 with. Okay, so that's normal speed. What we're going to do now is we're going to adjust the speed to make it slower. So what you do here, the command on Windows 7 is to press the Control key, and look, it goes to a command called Time Stretch, and then it's a drag to time stretch event. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold Control, we're going to click on this side until it turns blue and then we're gonna stretch it until it stops it only reaches up to a certain point and then it's there so this is what it looks like now hey there ladies and gentlemen boys and girls this is D22 with so that's what it looks like slower but you can also do the same thing faster. So this is what I sound like faster. You see? You can set it as fast or as slow as you like. So we're going to go back to normal speed. Hey there. That's not quite normal speed. So this would be. Hey there, la hey there ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is with Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. And that's normal speed. So you can adjust it to however you like. You can basically make it slower, you can make it faster. You can also change the pitch and the type of audio. So I think we've already discussed that in the last tutorial. So that is usually how you speed up a video. Now, splitting a video is also easy. Let's say you are at a part that you want to split up. So you go into your timeline and you click the part that you want to split up and then you press S. S is basically for split. So you just split your clip easily instead of having to go to a certain line and then doing this. Because some people, when they go to a clip here and they want to crop it out, they usually do this. And then they don't know where to go after that. And that's how some people split it. I learned this trick from a good friend of mine. His name is Ryan, Ryan Osaurus. So he taught me how to split videos properly, so I'm sharing this with you so that it makes it easier. So whenever you go to a scene, press S, and then you find another scene, press S again, then press S again, then press S again, then press S again, then press S again. That is effective video splitting. And it's a lot easier, too. So you can also see each part of the video that you want to see. It tracks it properly. So then, after you've split your video, then you can just render it however you wish. Now, we've done a lot of stuff here so far. My other videos, which will be in the annotations, explain more how to use it. This is just more of an editing guideline. It's not really a big video. I probably should have thought of that, but I thought this would be big enough because it 
I didn't explain a lot of features in Windows Live Movie Maker and also some in Sony Vegas. Because in Sony Vegas, you can import multiple file types. You can import WMVs, AVIs, whatever your computer can handle. You have to make sure that your computer can handle it so that it would work on Sony Vegas. If it does not work, then it will probably give you an error message or it's probably too big in size for it to process and that your computer would need a lot of memory and a lot of graphics memory to get everything sorted out properly. So in this sense, this would be it because I've already explained how to edit in Sony Vegas in another tutorial. So this is basically just a supplemental video to the ones that I've done before. So this usually answers questions to mainly just Windows Live Movie Maker when it comes to functionality and features. Windows Live Movie Maker is only limited to just basic features, whereas Sony Vegas has a lot more features. Now, to end this video, I'm going to include the annotations to each of my other tutorials so that you can understand why each of them is only limited to what they have and why Sony Vegas is more equipped for professional video editing. So, thank you very much for watching and subscribing. You can also subscribe to my main channel as well. I have a lot more videos where I do a lot of Sony Vegas style edits and special effects and also some small vlogs. So, you don't just have to subscribe here, you can also subscribe there. So, I recommend you subscribe to my main channel because I do a lot more uploading than on the responses channel. And it's more highly anticipated content. So, thank you very much for watching. Get Field for Life and I'll respond to you another time. And don't forget to subscribe to my main channel for more. Goodbye.